Course B2A1. Assemblies. Welcome to the Assemblies chapter. Having gained extensive knowledge of modeling individual parts in the B1P course, the focus of this course is now on assembling them. In this first course you will learn how to load, save and navigate in an assembly. The next courses will cover the building of an assembly, positioning the parts, and later the creation of an assembly from scratch. And to get started right away, you will find this complete assembly in step format as a download. Open step file. It is best to put the step file into a separate folder and unzip the file there. Then start NX, select File, Import, Step 214. Navigate to the folder where the step file was saved and select the file. Now, here is the path to the step file, and here is the path to the then resulting NX data. Without manual changes, both paths are the same. Be sure to check these settings. Only set the check mark for solids. After clicking OK, several assemblies and individual parts are created in the background. Depending on the hardware, the import of the data can take 2 to 3 minutes. In the notification center you can see when the import is finished. Here you could also navigate directly to the folder. But this way you cannot make any settings about the type and size of the assembly to be loaded. To open the main assembly for the first time, click open after importing and navigate to the folder. Then click options. Here you still need to make these settings. Load from folder. Load all components. Option fully load. The loading options will of course be explained in detail in the next videos. Click OK and select the B2A1-0 file in the folder. Open Assembly Navigator. The test assembly is a compact horizontal slide. To be able to examine the assembly structure, another navigator is displayed, the Assembly Navigator. Make a right click in the resource bar and activate the Assembly Navigator here. With a click on this tab the content becomes visible. Similar to the part navigator, it is recommended to open the assembly navigator in a separate window. To do this, double click the tab. After double clicking, a separate window appears, or, as seen here, the assembly navigator is already docked to the side. If your navigator is also already docked, position the cursor in the header and, keeping the left mouse button pressed, drag it to the center of the screen. If the navigator is shown as a window, the window can also be moved this way. Simply position the cursor in the header and the window can be moved freely by holding down the left mouse button. Or it can also be placed on a second screen. When the window approaches the edge of the graphics window, the preview frame changes. If the left mouse button is then no longer pressed, the assembly navigator is now fixed to the edge of the screen. And, as already shown, it could be relaxed again. With a click on the cross it is closed again and appears as a tab in the resource bar, and can be opened again with a double click. My advice. Create a sketch as a test. In the open sketch, close the parts and assemblies navigator. NX saves this setting. When you later create or open a sketch, both navigators are automatically closed. This way you have maximum space available on the screen as soon as you sketch.
and when you exit the sketch, both navigators are displayed again. As the course progresses, the assembly navigator is shown at the right edge of the graphics window. Assembly structure. The first column shows the structure of the assembly. We will come to the other columns and their sorting later. The assembly consists of one main assembly and three sub-assemblies. The sub-assemblies are opened by clicking on the cross. The assemblies are presented as three small blocks and the parts as one block. In the assembly B2A1-2 another plane is shown, a sub-sub-assembly, the B2A1-2-1 with three individual parts. In principle, any number of sub-assemblies can be formed. Assemblies contain, as in practice, standard parts, purchased parts and production parts. Assemblies and their components can be hidden by clicking in the checkbox. Components that have been assembled several times are summarized in the navigator and provided with a counter. With a right click in the assembly navigator and a further click on unpack all in the context menu, components that have been installed several times can also be selected individually. And with pack all they are combined again. Open components in window. A component selected in the graphics window, or assembly navigator with a right click, is opened in a separate window with the open in window command. The component is active and can be processed. The part navigator shows the working steps of the active part. Since this is a step import, only the body is displayed here, of course, but further working steps are listed immediately, as usual. By clicking on the tab of the assembly, it will be displayed again and another part can be selected. Subassemblies can also be opened in a separate window using the open in window command. But to which assembly did this single part belong? After right-clicking in the assembly navigator, the assembly structure is displayed in reverse. The assembly directly above the part is displayed at the top. By clicking on the small cross in the tab, a window is closed again. If the previously displayed components or sub-assemblies are still displayed in other windows, the window will be closed without any comment. Only when the main assembly is closed, this message appears with the question whether only the assembly or also its components should be closed from the working memory. Assembly and component can also be displayed simultaneously. The screen can therefore be divided as desired. The individual windows can also be dragged to another screen. or a sub-assembly is additionally displayed. If the cursor is in the window, the orientation can be changed. Clicking into the window activates it and the component or sub-assembly can be processed. The processing is visible in all windows. And with reset layout the windows are merged again. Edit components. To edit a component in an assembly, simply double-click on the component in the graphics window, or in the assembly navigator. 
Only active parts can be edited, or in other words, all work steps always take place in the active part. Always. Editing a component that has been installed several times will affect all copies. Expand assembly structure. The expand to work command expands the assembly structure to the active part. And expand all components pulls the entire structure apart. And collapse all pushes it back together. Save assembly. Finally, the assembly is saved. With the normal save command, the active part is always saved. If the active part is a component, only this component is saved. If the active part is an assembly, this assembly and all changed components contained in it are saved. Components that have not been changed do not have to be saved. So, to save all changed components and subassemblies, make the main assembly active and click Save. Save All also saves components and assemblies that do not belong to this assembly. This means that all opened and modified parts are saved in one go. Click File. Close all parts or simply close the last open window in preparation for the next course. The next tutorial is about the load options. You control where the data comes from, so you influence the location and also the amount of data to load large assemblies faster. If you want to support us, subscribe to the channel.